Hi, I'm Tim Green, and tonight I'm going to be um, doing my seventh instalment of the repairable atomizer head to head series. And uh, tonight I'm going to be looking at the clear ohm. Now, I will say straight away that I, I actually filmed this already um, last night, but uh, I decided I wasn't happy with what I filmed um, because I wasn't giving an impartial review. So, even though I posted it on YouTube, I posted it private, uh, I deleted it this morning after re watching it. Um, so, this is my second attempt uh, at an impartial um, review of the Clear Ohm Atomizer. Uh, it's a repairable tank atomizer, uh, it's a 2mm tank, portably, um, and it's by eSigFR.fr. So let's have a look at what, what you actually get. Now I will say that the, this is actually the, uh, the Clear Ohm Slim. Um, there is an XL version, though to be perfectly honest I have never seen it for sale on the site. Um, and the, in all honesty that would have been the one that I got because uh, a 2 mil tank um, really doesn't hold very much. It's the same as a, as a, a, a mega tank cart uh, if in a type B atomizer. Anyway, this is what you get um, with the the clear on slim. You get your, your cap uh, for fitting your drip tip. Um, this is um, turned aluminium um, and if you can see that, um, bring a little closer just in case you can't see, there you have your hole for your drip tip you also have your ventilation hole here as well. Okay, you also get the uh, the tube. Um, now, in most cases, this is a. I think in every every type of cart or tank, so in every tank of this type that I've ever come across, this is polycarbonate. I don't believe this is polycarbonate. Uh, the reason for that is because of a nice char mark here, it actually um, where the coil is, the position of the coil on the, the internal section is very close to the, the side wall here. So that, that is a bit of a char mark there. It could be polycarbonate, I suppose. It just doesn't feel like it. It feels... It f <laughs> to me, when I, get, when I take a piece of polycarbonate, I take a piece of acrylic. Uh, of the same size in each hand, the acrylic kind of feels lighter to me, uh, and this feels like acrylic. I could be wrong, but that's that's how it, that's how I feel about it. If I'm wrong, fair enough. Um, so anyway, there's your tank wall, uh, and here you have the actual main body section, which uh, is a five ten thread. Again, it's turned aluminium. Um, two O-rings, and if you look, the base is actually uh, proud of uh, these sections here. And that's because the uh, the tube here sits on top of there; it doesn't, so it can't slide down, um, and the O-rings provide the seal. The atomizer element itself has a familiar look. Um, Every other previous atomizer that we've looked at, in, uh, except for the IRT, has this arrangement with your positive and your negative terminals. Um, on the clear room, there's a hole here that you use to thread down the wick. Now, the wick that's normally st the wick that's supplied with the clear room is the one millimeter um, bully wick. Um, that for me just never ever worked uh, I'd always get a, I'd always get multitude of dry hits it didn't work fast enough it didn't work well enough um, and what I ended up doing was using some of my own wick um, I've used it a few times in these reviews already I, I have a, uh, a three mil braided wick um, that can be broken up into individual strands. I used it on the, uh, this is the one that I get on the group by. Um, but that's uh, that's a piece of the wick that I use. It's it's a bit more a lot more substantial. It's actually denser, and at the same time, it's a bit a bit lightly woven. And what I do with the clear on is I actually double it over, um, and then 
I wrap my coil around this section here, uh, leaving what well, perhaps that much from the end. Uh, and, and, and the idea behind that is that's then pressing against the side wall of the, of the outer tube and hopefully it's protecting it a little from the heat of the atomizer itself. Um, doing that I find that it wicks very well, it is all down to the wick. Um, and I find it, it works very well, uh, and I don't get any dry hits. Uh, it's and you know in that respect, it, it's not it's not so bad at all. Um, there's a few things that I need to show you about the uh, the design and the construction of this, um, which, which you need to be aware of. First of all, I'll I'll just I'll put it together for you. Um, so basically that section there like that um, and that you know that looks okay the only thing that it, ah, you see you did it there you don't need it it does pop off it's not something that I would entrust to a pocket um, even though um, the base of the clear ohm is a bit more proud so that the tube can sit flush uh, with the base and, 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 and you know that so it stops that from sliding down. Sadly, if you're somebody who's likely to I mean I do this a lot, I store I store mods like this in my pocket and I'll go to pick them up, you know, using the top. The problem is though, is that it just comes away and I didn't wiggle, I just pulled. Um uh, and it and it does pull away fairly easily. Now, I know that these are being manufactured by hand. Um, I don't know the manufacturing process. I just know that the person that's doing it is doing it by hand. It's one one person, and I'll talk about that a little later. Um, so that you know, I, I, it's only fair, I suppose, to expect that there will be some slight differences some people will find that uh, and, and because of course there's, there's variances in the tube but some people will find that they don't have that and in fact this whole thing is probably um, quite tight quite difficult to get on and if that's the case then fantastic um, I'm just really wary about something that um, pops apart so readily so easily um, it's not, you know, it's it's the sort of thing that I would have hoped would have come out um, during prototyping phase. Most tanks of this ilk that I've seen, they actually usually have two O-rings. They have a wider section up here and they'll have two O-rings to, uh, to add a little extra tension so that it doesn't come apart quite so easily like that. And maybe that's what this needs. So... We have the tank there, and and the cap sits on top of here, like so, like so, and you can you see what's happening here. What happens is, and, and I'll show you the reason why. What you've got here is you've got very little. You've you've, you've got what two, three mil clearance here, with an O-ring on it, and that's all that's gripping it on now. What I find is if I really shove that on and twist it round, then it'll hold for a little while. But you've only got a little bit of clearance between the coil and the top. Now what you're going to get is a lot of hot air being generated there, a lot of heat being generated there, which then leads on to expansion. Expansion is going to push those O-rings out again. And as I'm talking, I can see it's, it's lifted about half a mil already. Yeah, and this is without the thing being under power. Um, th that is a major, major annoyance. What happens is, when you've got your drip tip in, you, it, it, it starts to pop about. So you start twisting it and you, you start to get the thing on, you know, 
Um, and before you know it, you end up with, and this for me is a serious, serious major design flaw. You, you, you're not paying attention to that air hole. And what happens is, if you don't pay attention to it, you end up with your, the air hole in this position. Air hole there, coil there. Now, on more than one occasion, I've been vaping on this, and it's run a little drier, or I've perhaps just caned it a little bit too much, and instead of getting vapour through here, I get a jet of red hot air coming out of here, because it's the way that, you see, I think it's the way that I vape, because when I vape, I always have a little bit, and there's always a bit of an exhale that goes back down, you know, sometimes you'll see it with people with uh, a tank, and there'll be a little bit of smoke comes out of the bottom uh, ventilation as how I vape what ha actually happens there is that that's pushing out hot air through there but what's here my face um, I've singed hair um, I've burnt myself and it's a seriously seriously bad idea to have the air hole in a movable area Every other tank system, the air hole's in a fixed point. If the thing comes apart, it's on a thread that when it's tightened up to its fullest extent, it's at a fixed known point. What you have there is an air hole that can be wherever it likes to be. And because the cap likes to pop off all the time, you're li more likely just kind of lose your patience, put the thing on like so um, and it ends up over the coil you won't notice until you next take a toke and then you'll get a cheek full of hot air which isn't pleasant by anybody's standards <coughs> um, now when I when I filmed the original version uh, of this uh, review um, I tried to demonstrate that whole hot air thing, but uh, I'm not going to now because it was just a bit of a farce. To take my word for it, you'll get a jet of hot air streaming out of there if you're not careful. So anyway, let's uh, quickly move on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put uh, some juice in the tank. The juice for this review is Griswold's Coconut Mint Chop Chip. Uh, it was quite literally the first bottle that I grabbed um, from my um, juice cellar, <laughs> so to speak. Okay, now what I've got here is I've got a 1ml syringe. Um, actually, f you know, that's 1ml full. Remember, this is a 2ml tank, okay? And what you do is you, you, you put... The needle through down where the wick is and fill it up. Now first of all, before I take this any further, I have just emptied a 1ml syringe into this 2ml tank. You would expect that to be half full. Can you see that? So this 2ml tank, this tank that was sold to me as a 2 mil tank is actually a 1.1 mil tank. It is just here, the level. And I want it there. There's about five, about 5 or 6 mil between the top of the liquid level there and the top of there. That I would say was about 0.1 of a mil. That's a 1.1 mil tank. That is the same as one of these. So for 65 euros, I've bought a 1 mil tank. Not a 2 mil tank, a 1 mil tank. So you can imagine how happy I am about that. I'm starting to sound negative again. I will, you know, I will try to remain objective, but I'm finding this difficult. Um, 
I'm not even going to go into the reported issues um, with customer services, uh, lack of, or uh, delivery times. Um, I'm just not going to not going going there. The fact that I've mentioned it should be enough. Uh, I've just primed the wick, making sure that the air hole is on the opposite side to the coil. You see, in this. In every atomizer, every repairable atomizer I know, the airflow goes across the coil in some way, whether it be from the side or from underneath, it goes across the coil. With this, I can't. I can't put that air hole above the coil, because if I do, I'm going to get a face full of hot air. So that's going to impart, that's going to have an effect on the overall vaping experience. Now the resistance of this, I believe I've got that set to, the, the resistance is about 1.9, 1.8. So I'm just going to change the voltage of the Bravari. I'm just going to take it down to 4. Um, and let's see what it happens, let's see what it vapes like. So this is the clear on. Um, let's have a look. I'm going to crack up the voltage a little bit. Um, but four. I'm going to try it at four point four. Um, Not masses amount of vapor. The problem I've got is that this lid's popping off again. Now that's interfering with my airflow. So uh, you see, it's popping off again. It's just so annoying. I'm going to try and put it a little closer. Oops, a little closer to the coil. Um, to see if that works, that, if, that, if that has any help. So, try this again. And that's what happens. <coughs> uh, not good. It's, it, it's impossible to kind of really vape um, and look see I've done it again look air hole there coil there and it's already popping off again it's impossible to vape this thing um, it really is it's a shame because the flavor that I get from it is all right it's not fabulous but it's all right. Um, I don't think I need to to really flog this this any further. Really, it's uh, you, you've seen for yourself what happens. Um, we'll move on to the scores. Okay, looks. Um, in all honesty, it's not a bad looking um, atomizer. It, it's made out of aluminium. Some people have a problem with aluminium. Uh, I personally don't, but I, even though I don't, I wouldn't leave uh, liquid in there overnight anyway. Um, I'll, just, just cause it's aluminium. I, I would, I just don't like the thought of it, you know any aluminium oxide soaking in and steeping into the juice. I suppose so. But that, that aside, looks wise, it's all right. Um, it's not particularly, it's not ugly, it's not fabulously beautiful, um, middle of the road really, I, I think. Um, so I would give that um, a five for, for looks. Um, ease of use. Well, 
it's hard to use. Um, you're vaping on it, and the fucking lid will pop off in your mouth. And if you've got a build-up of fluid in the chamber there, and you happen to be driving a car at the time, that's not good. Um, as you can see, as I'm talking, the, it is, the lid's popping off again. So, I'm going to be... It, it's... it's I, I'm going to give it a zero. I'm going to give it a zero. I, it's barely usable as an atomizer. Um, in fairness, I have, before the, the, the review tonight, I, I have been able to use it. I've been able to use it on a number of occasions. Um, in all honesty, the cat problem hasn't been as bad in the past as it has been tonight. But in its current form, I can't give any other score but a zero. You couldn't vape that without worrying about whether that's coming off, whether you're going to burn your face off. Um, flavour. Flavour, I'm going to give it a five. Um, the flavour's okay. It's it's not as good as uh, an atomizer. Uh, it's not quite as good as an A2T Mega. But it's probably just a little bit better than the A2T, what flavour I got. But there was very little vapour production. So I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be kind. I'm gonna give it a, a five out of ten for flavour. Uh, middle of the road score. Uh, adaptability It's a tank, it's a repairable atomizer. Um, it's not gonna do anything else. Um, I'm going to give it a 5. It's a middle of the road score, but I'm going to give it an average score of 5. Um, value for money. Value for money. Um, like all repairable atomizers, they are better value for money than a regular atomizer because it's not dead money um, normally. Um, if you can't use the atomizer because of design flaw or whatever, well, then it's basically money that's going nowhere. This is 65 euros. It's not even the 2 mil tank that's advertised. So, for value for money, I'm going to give it a 4. Um, yeah. So, so, we've got 5 for looks, uh, 0 for, for ease of use. Um, five for flavour, five for adaptability, and four for value for money. Um, that gives an overall score of four, which isn't great. Um, I hope you found the uh, the review informative. Um, I have tried to to remain as objective as I possibly can. I think during the course of that you could see why I, I, I struggled with being objective about it yesterday um, but I wanted to remake the, the, the review to try and give it uh, a fighting chance really um, it's kind of difficult to, to, to say anything nice about the clear arm it's never really been a fantastic performer um, the only reason I got it to perform well when I had it performing well was because I found a decent wick. So, I mean, I know that's a big factor in all repairable atomizers anyway, but it's something to just bear in mind. Um, personally, it's a bit of a dodo for me, is the clear arm. Um, but there you have it. Um, I hope you've. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the review. Uh, thank you once again for all your kind and positive comments with this uh, with regarding this series of reviews. Um, the next review I'm going to be doing is the RDA uh, Clockworks Repairable Dripping Atomizer. Um, and yeah, and, and then we'll be. One more after that, the RTA, and that will be the roundup complete. I do have some other atomizers that I will be doing a little bit of a, uh, a chat about. 
um, as an addendum to all of these but I'm not going to review them in perhaps the same way because they're not so widely available. Uh, anyway, until then, um, take good care, thanks for watching and keep on vaping.